All right, Tehran Van Gastri is here with us today. Welcome to Ajil, Tehran Jun. Well, thank you, Amin Jun, for having me on Ajil. I love, uh, you know, this is interesting. I've never done like these recorded conversations. It's funny how, how much technology can bring the world sure together. Sure you have. You, you're, you're online all the time, man. I've seen links from you. You speak to everyone. You're telling me you've never done a recorded conversation before? I've never done an online recorded Oh, I see. I see. But in that, person, that, you have. Exactly. That's very cool to me. Like everyone, every like I can communicate with you all the way where you are. That's right. Where I am, I'm in Los Angeles. I could Even be sitting. Though, I could be sitting in Thailand or, or Australia, and we'd still be talking like that. Yeah, and that's why it's it's crazy to me that with all this technology, we still have things like war or or miscommunication or hatred. Everyone can talk. We can all communicate. All the time. All the time. Tehran, uh, the average Iranian or Persian person who would look at you right now wouldn't know you're Persian unless they know you because you're famous and they've seen you before. But I, I, I mean, Juri, again, they got Conan. If somebody were just to look at you, they wouldn't say you're Persian. I'm tell not. us tell us a little bit about you, about your background. I'm sure people know, but we would love to hear it again. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not the typical looking Persian guy. I'm not like short and fat and bald and hairy, but I mean, you know what it is? Here's the thing, man. Um my mom's black, my dad's Persian, and so I'm mixed. And the thing is, the funny thing is, uh like on the outside, I look black. I look very American. Right? On the inside, I'm like all the Iranian kids, all the Persian kids that are born outside of the country, all part of the diaspora. We're all mixed, regardless if we have one, uh, one mixed parent or not. We are all mixed because we all grow up with these different cultures. Like even yourself, you know, growing up in Canada and America, it's just it's a different culture of its own. It's, so always, like, it's always so hard to tell somebody's interior thoughts exactly. and emotions rather than your look you know it could be asian it could be uh african-american you could be hispanic and have persian in you but it's so hard when you say you know i feel persian inside all the way it's so hard to describe unless you say it yourself and we hear it from you and that's the thing what does that even mean feeling persian all the way on the inside like we're all just people we're all unique individuals people and that's one thing that i bring to the to the entertainment world is that i talk about this kind of stuff all the time because it's very interesting to me that people always try to put you in a box they always try to say well black people act like this and Persian people act like this. Black people eat watermelon, Persian people drive BMWs. But that's not the case. There are a lot of black people that drive BMWs, and trust me, there are a lot of Persian people that eat watermelon. I mean, watermelon, Persians eat watermelon for breakfast, and dinner, which, for lunch. Which brings me to my next topic of stereotyping. I was gonna ask you, what do you think about stereotyping? I'm pretty sure you're strongly against it, but what, what does stereotyping even mean in today's world? Well, it's, it's interesting because stereotyping is when, whenever you group an entire uh, classification of people into one group, that's when you stereotype. When you say that, oh, you must be good at basketball because you're black. Well, you know what? Technically, that's not true. In America, there are 40 million, 40 million black people and only 1,000 of them make it to the NBA or college basketball. So what? Do you just think the other 39 million, 39,999,999 people just, they're not black enough? It's not that way. People love to stereotype because it makes it easy for us. As people, we judge. And to, in order to justify the fact that we're judging people, we stereotype all the time. And, and the truth is, most of the time, those stereotypes are not true. Uh, not all Asian people are good at math. Now, all Asian people are bad drivers. That one's true. But I'm saying, the good at math one, that's not a fair assessment, you know? Everyone under thinks that people are so different. There's all this, like, racism. Like, I'm sure when you go to the airport, sir, you're not getting through security. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not seriously, because I want security to come get you right now. Like, you have, you have, like, a little look to you like it's dangerous look. Is this your husband, ma'am? Yeah, he's a terrorist. So here's the thing. Is he on time to everything, him? Everything, everything. <laughs> but I don't have like I don't have problems at the airport. Like when I go to the airport, it's not the same thing. Cause I look I look American, I look black. So when I go, they're like.
Nigga, you good. Like, they just let me walk through. They don't even ask questions. You know what I'm saying? My dad goes to the airport. They give him so much. He has so many problems at the airport, but he brings the problems on himself. He does it to himself because he tries to do stuff you know you're not allowed to do. My dad still tries to bring water on the plane. <laughs> There's a big sign, no water. And every time they make him throw it away, he gets so mad. He brings like, he brings things. He brings this like five ton pound of Pond's cream. I don't know, uses Pond's. <laughs> then he brings water and they make him throw it away. He gets so mad. One time we're going to the airport, I'm like, Bubba, you can't take Ob with you. You can't take water. He's like, it's okay. <laughs> Takes the bag. The guy's like, sir, you can't take the water with you. He's like, I don't know. What do you mean? It's like, sir, there's bottles of water in your bag. You can't take them with you. True story. My dad's like, it's not boss here. <laughs> the guy takes them out. My dad had frozen the water. But last night, he's like, it doesn't say no ice. It does not say no ice. Don't you think that Persians, uh, in America especially, are stereotyped as well? In a bit? I mean, I, I've, I've, I've heard stories, but I want to hear it from you. No, 100%. Iranians in America are stereotyped very much. And here's the double edge of that sword. The stereotypes that were rich and successful, we love. But the ones about being terrorists and, um, you know, backwards, we hate. Well, guess what, guys? It's all part of the same stereotype. It's the same sword. So we can't just pick and choose the ones we like and then say, well, these don't apply to us because we don't like them. That's not how it works. Not for us, not for anyone. Speaking about, uh, speaking about the rich part and everything, uh, Tehran, and I don't want to name any names with the shows, but you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Shows of Sunset. Shows of There you go. So you show. So they, they, like, when, when, that show, when that show came out, okay, a lot of people watched it. A lot of people probably still watch it if it's still going on. But if you speak to the older generation, my yeah. parents' age, your parents' age, your uncles, your aunts, 99% uh, of them are probably going to say, oh, I hate that show, this is so stupid, they stereotype Iranians for money and everything, they, they're going to tell you that, but then again, the younger generation watch it, and they might like it, but everybody kind of has something negative to say about it, because Persians are stereotyped as rich and driving, you know, uh, Ferraris and, and, and living in Beverly Hills and everything, what do you, what do you think about that, the mixed hey, emotions? Hey, hey. You're absolutely right. People will be like, but here's the thing about that. And Shaws of Sunset is a very interesting concept. Now, me personally, I'm not a fan of what it portrays, but I am a fan of the show. And I'll explain why I say that. Because the show is a part of becoming and assimilating into the American diaspora. Iranians didn't have a problem with Jersey Shore. Iranians didn't have a problem with Friday and Friday after next when black people were uh, portrayed a certain way. And when Italians are portrayed in the mafia, Iranians think it's really cool. But when it happens to them, all of a sudden they want to protest. Well, that's how it works. You shouldn't look at individual situations. You should see either you're against all of it or you're against none of it. Now, with Shahs of Sunset, the only people who dislike that show so much happen to be Iranians. The rest of America really like the show. And in, in that, they have found a new appreciation for being Iranian or Persian. It's even cool now. It's the coolest and thing. on top of that, it's a reality show. It's on Bravo. So it is, I mean, people who watch Bravo, what do you expect? They're not expecting to see a, you know, a, a serious show about, about exactly. lawyers and, and detectives. What do you think Housewives of Atlanta is? That's stereotyping black people or love and hip hop. But they don't get upset at those things. Those shows they like. It's only when it happens to them. And that's the, that, that's the problem with a lot of things that go on in the world. Kick off, shoot, jump on the job. Listen to the jam master as he starts to rock. His سلام آقا ببخشید میشه یک چنجا و کوبیده با برنج پنیر هم اگر با نون میشه پنیر بلغار کره ماست ماست و خیار یک دوغ هم میخوام بردارم اینجا چنجش خیلی خوشمزه است با تهران آشنا بشید نه این تهران 
بلکه این تهران 28 ساله متولد واشنگتن دی سی آمریکا. من دی سی به دنیا آمدم. پدرم ایرانیه، مادرم با آمریکایی سیاس اینجا با هم دیگه در دانشگاه آشنا شدن و خب بچه دار شدن و هم بچه هاشون هم شدن شد من من هم بابام اسمم رو گذاشت تهران خیلی راحت بود این دنیا اسم من هم گذاشت تهران توی آمریکا توی پولیتیکل لانسکیپ حالا همه اینا رو میتونین به فارسی بگیم اینجا لازم هست که سیاسی در طبیعت سیاسی آمریکا البته باید به این نکته توجه کرد که با وجود این که تهران در آمریکا فارسی رو یاد گرفته ولی متد آموزشش با بقیمون خیلی فرقی نداشته من پدرم فارسی و راستش با تو سری یاد گرفتم من آخه بابام چیز یا من بعد فارسی یاد میگرفتم یا اون انگلیسی حالا بدونین کدومشون کی یاد گرفتی که توانایی تهران فقط به زبان فارسی خط نمیشه بلکه تهران شدیدن به شاعرای اصیل ایرانی هم علاقه داره خنده داره اینه که همه آهنگای ایرانی یا دختره دوستش داره یا دوستش نداره یا عاشقش شده یا دیگه نمیخواد اصلا دخترها هیچ وقت تو عمرش دیگه ببینه پس به این نتیجه میرسیم که تهران با همون ته دو نقطه است مرسی تهران سالی که از من نکردن همه از من خیلی سال بکنم و سالی که از من تالو نکردن اینه که عقیده من چیه نایس تی شرت بای دو وی تل اس اباد وات وات یور ویرنگ او اوکی سو ا لات پیپل ابیسلی یو نو دس از لایک دی دی کینگ سایرس اند ایت ون اراوند دی کانتری دس ام This artifact went around, around the country because it's it's a throwback to uh, a, a very now. If you want to talk about Persian, this is Persian. This is the, are you talking about the Farhang Foundation though that toured in L.A. Exactly. This cylinder is Persian. The concept of of civil civil rights and equality. Now that's Persian. Those are. Those are characteristics of Persians that we should probably focus on a lot more because the actual Persian characteristics are things like justice, equality, um, morality, these things. Even in Farsi, we don't even have a word for he or she because in original Persian empire, men and women were exactly equal. There have been women generals in King Cyrus's army. Women were allowed to uh, vote on land as if And even when I say allowed to, it was equal. They weren't allowed. It was just a, a given right. That's something we should focus on. Now, those are, now that's a real Shah of Sunset. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe that should be the next uh, episode or the next project. Hopefully, somebody should, should, should go into that. Tehran, tell us about how and when you learned Farsi as a kid. I know that you've been to Iran as a, as a child, but not, not since then. And your dad was a major, a huge influence um, on you for... for Uh, learning the language. Tell us a little bit more about that. Take us back. Well, here's the thing. It's very funny. I didn't, I, I didn't grow up learning Farsi from the time I was a kid. What happened was um, I grew up learning English because my dad was learning, trying to learn English. So he spoke to me in English. And then one day when I was like five, he said, he, he, he was like, you need to learn Farsi. I want to talk about my heart and my heart. باید به زبان خودم به زبان مادرین بهت بگم so he, he decided that I was going to learn Farsi and my mom was very supportive because she wanted me to be uh, very involved in the culture and know about my heritage that's very important to both of my parents how hard was it to learn though as a kid I mean it's such a difficult language to learn I got two kids and they, they, they have a hard time learning they understand but they don't reply as much My dad actually, my dad's an engineer, like so many Persian dads. And yeah. here's the funny thing about that. Um, my dad invented a technique to teach kids uh, things, like um, a special technique. You can actually purchase it online. It's called Tusari Zadar. But Tusari, how much your Baba fits? You ought to be there. Go to Tusari.com. Serious? Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, no, my dad, you know what it is? Uh, when you... It's because I was totally, I was totally immersed in Persian, meaning that my dad only spoke to me in Farsi. My dad only responded to me if I spoke Farsi back. 
he, I did go to Iran twice when I was a kid. I was a little kid. I went to Iran a total of like three weeks. But, and I don't really remember much. I just remember Judd de Chalus. I remember Judd de Chalus. I remember the sheep when they cut the sheep's head. Oh my God. Korbuni. Babai. 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 Like I was like, Babai. Because it was like I'd never seen a sheep that close. And I was like, Babai. So, and then these, they slaughtered a poor thing in front of you. Huh? Right in front of me. Like blood everywhere, just right at the airport. <laughs> like my, it wasn't easy. When you're a kid, Kids don't want to learn anything. We don't even want to learn to tie our own shoes. We don't want to go to regular school, to Bidise, to Farsi school. But it's something that as a grown-up, obviously I appreciate it very much. And how much, how much zahmat, how much hard work my parents put in, uh, both my mom and my dad, to make sure that I was able to read, write, and speak Farsi as well as I do. What did you learn from your parents um, after all this time? I learned from my parents that the best way to stay together in a marriage, okay, is to never be able to speak the same language. That is the number one. Really? <laughs> Everything works out fine. In that the Persian the community, way. it's not that, that not easy because there's Iranians and Iranians are marry, you know, man and wife speak 100%. together, the kids speak together, and then English is like the second language for them. A hundred, a hundred percent. With English, see, the thing is, I learned from my parents a lot of things about culture, a lot of things about pride, and, and the most important things is acceptance. And that's something that I also, on stage and on TV shows and radio shows, I try to put out there, is people to accept themselves. Because I had to accept myself. When I was growing up, being mixed, even if you were black and white, wasn't very common. And now it's a lot more common. When I was a kid, being Persian and black was it's still unique but back then it was i was a unicorn no one else existed i think you're still a unicorn i know how many unicorns like you man let me tell you tell us tehran tell us um about i have a dream by tehran the video that you're looking in the back here uh tell us about that video very interesting very thank you for that video i did a lot of videos i do are you know fun and funny but that video i did was a was a feeling i had one day when like I was talking about how people group you into a box and a category. That's about that. I was watching a piece on President Obama and I realized they keep calling him the first black president. But his mom is white. Mamane Obama Sefid Puste, Sefide. Exactly. And they're totally denying that part of him as if he didn't grow up with his mom, as if his mom wasn't a part of his life. And that to me was unfair. And because of that unfairness, I realized it's not just with President Obama, that's the highest of the system. It goes down that everyone wants to just box you in. It's part of the system. And that system is to keep us separate. Iranians, even in, in the Iranian system, some people call themselves Iranian, and some people, to distance themselves from the current government and regime, they call themselves Persian because it sounds more fancy, like the cat or the rug, you know? But the, the thing is, we are Iranian. And Iran is not the government. It never has been and it never will be. It will always be the people. So I'm a proud Iranian. I'm a proud Persian. I am a proud black man. I am proud to be me. I am proud to be Tehran. And with a name like Tehran, it's very... It's very hard for me to step away. A lot of guys, his name's Bobak, and he goes by Bobby. Or the best is when Iranians change their name from Akbar Agha to Tony Valentino to sound <laughs> like they're mobster Italians. I not only am I proud that my name is Tehran, I make sure that everyone knows how to pronounce my name. I'm like, no, it's not Tehran, it's not Tyrone, it's Tehran. My name is Tehran, and I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day my life will mean more than eight Lincoln's four score or growing up to be on a rap tour. That's so seven years ago. I don't dance, I don't sing, I don't want a Super Bowl ring. Well, I kinda do, but I can live without bling bling. I promise I really can. They say I can grow up and play ball because I'm black and I'm tall, but why not look at me and say, 
He could be a thoracic surgeon or, or mathematician based on his own ambition and smart. The tin man already has heart and the cowardly lion isn't afraid to be himself anymore. No longer we grow stronger when we look past the color of skin and see the truth within one another. Not just another black man angry and mad or man I feel bad for what? Strength comes not only from inside, but from working our muscle of pride. And we must learn to work it out together. I have a dream. I have a dream that I refuse to be boxed in by the boxes on forms they have me check, climb out through intellect and accomplishment and represent for my people. Not the black race or the white race, but the human race. Just look at my face. I'll run at my own pace, thank you very much. I'm tired of running the endless race track. I know that I'm Persian and black, but I'm much much more. Do you know that I'm human? Like you? Like me? Like everybody else on this planet we all call home? One day I hope you will see. One day I hope you will understand that there's no place like home. And home is where the heart is. And we all have hearts after all. I have a dream. I have a dream that it won't be important to have the first black president be elected to a second term. Just another great president. No sex, no race, who earned greatness despite the color of his or her epidermis, but because of his or her earnest to serve. One day, we will remove that hyphen that I've been living my life in and be just an American or, or yet just a person or better yet, a just person. The hyphens like cursing, separating appreciation from integration, keeping it apart an entire nation that I just want to be a part of. Instead of affirmative action, let's have positive action in all of our actions. I know I can't get no satisfaction, but I have a dream. Well, I wish I wish we had more people like you in the community, man. Let me tell you, it's it's really inspirational and something to be proud of. And uh, speaking of Iranians, why don't we have Iranian politicians, Tehran? There's been over 40 years that the diaspora has immigrated to the United States. So much wealth has come with it. So much brain power has come with it. So much love and affection has come with it. We do not have a single politician. I don't want to get too much into politics. No, no. I, you know what? Here's the thing. What's I mean, going on? My background, even though I don't talk about politics and religion at all in my shows, my background is I have, a, I have an undergrad degree in international politics and communications, a master's in economics, and a law degree. So I know about politics. And the reason why we don't have Iranian politicians is because Iranian people have been disillusioned from the political atmosphere because of everything that's happened in Iran and in the history and in the past. And so because of that, Iranians have come to this country and they haven't unified. Exactly. We sometimes we don't even end up talking about it. And that's a sad thing for Iranians to be the most affluent, educated, minorities in the United States and yet not be connected and united because everyone thinks they're the boss and no one wants to follow and no one wants to be involved. Iranians have a lot of opinions, but when I do shows and I turn on the camera, they're all scared. Like when, when the camera's off, they have so many things to say. Talk to Urbino Oh no, I, I don't know. I, don't I, was, know. I, was in, I was in Rio in Brazil for the World Cup, Tehran. And, oh, I, was, that must have been amazing. and I had the camera on. And before the Iran Argentina game, I just wanted to speak to some Chantas Hamvatanomun. So bad, Konam Khanom, Aga, Bache. You know, what do you think about the game? Do you think we're going to win? Do you think we're going to lose? Tell us a little bit more about, you know, why you're here. Are you having a good time? I give a yeg nafal, baman so bad, kar. As soon as they knew I had a camera, nobody talked to me. When the camera was off, hame so bad, mikan. Are maaz Toronto, umadi, maaz Dallas, umadi, maaz, shemin dunam, khode Tehran, umadi. Well, when the camera was on, they wouldn't talk to me. Is that a problem in America, do you think? It's, it's a problem with Iranians everywhere. Because we don't talk, we, because we don't speak, because we don't speak up for ourselves, we keep thinking someone else is going to do it for us. And we get mad at other people. Iranians are getting mad at President Obama. Iranians are getting mad at other people in the community. And we do have some politicians. Let's not forget there are judges that are Iranian. There's, of course, Mayor Jimmy Delshad, who was the first Iranian mayor of Beverly Hills. We have, a, we have a, but not enough. Not we don't have that many 
politicians that represent us. However, our generation, my generation, this new upcoming generation, we could change all that. We are going to law school. We are going towards being involved and being a voice. And that's why people like me, you said I'm an inspiration and I appreciate that. I'm not. All I am is myself. And here's the thing about that, man. Mr. Yiksham Mimunam, I talk about this stuff, I'm like a candle. And when you take one candle and light another candle, that fire from the first candle, Zuruun Atish Kam Nemisha, Quadratish Kam Nemisha, it's just the same fire, but now you have two candles and you can light two more. Now you have four, and four becomes eight, and eight becomes 16, 16, 32, and then you see one day, Yik Mam Likat Quadish Atish Kirifte, a whole country, a whole whole premise, a moral, a principle is on fire and is caught on to everyone. That's what I hope to bring. Uh, Tarunjur, make us laugh a little bit and tell us about the joke that you always talk about, the Persian connection. I would love to hear it again. Having having a Persian connection? Yeah. Uh, I have so many jokes about that. Tamam Irani about Persian connection of Edunan, to save money. You know, this is so important. They have to come through. You have to come. Listen. It's a good time. I have shows at the Laugh Factory every Monday and Thursday at 10. Uh, you need to come through one time, because I do a lot of stuff. I talk about, and I talk about very real stuff, but I put it in a way that everyone can laugh because we're not laughing at each other. We're laughing at ourselves. And so I talk about being Persian. I talk about the Persian connection, having the Persian hookup. Everything's Persian. I talk about it. And the thing is, I kind of even sometimes, I, I do the Persian accent. What are you doing? But I want to make sure everyone knows I'm not making fun of the Persian accent. In fact, I have nothing but, but respect and admiration for the Persian accent because anyone who leaves their country and comes to a completely stranger country, like this is a country and learns a new language, I have so much respect for because that, that same accent is the accent of doctors and engineers and heads of NASA. I'm sure and right now a lot of people listening to that not only agree but are very appreciative of what you're saying because I haven't heard that a lot. I mean, a lot of people make fun of the accent because it's funny. I mean, you and I both laugh, but it is. not everybody is going to think the same way as you're thinking as to it takes a lot of guts and, and, and devotion to leave your country, immigrate or migrate to another country, learn 100%. a different language and then go through that. And then when your offspring, when your children are born and they speak without an accent, they might make fun of their parents. So that's that. There's a lot of history in what you're saying. There is a lot of history and it says a lot. It's actually, to me, it's a lot of, a lot of strength. I know that I couldn't leave my country and go somewhere else. I couldn't go to Italy or Africa or or an Arab country and just assimilate, I couldn't do that. And so because of that, I have a lot of respect for that accent. That accent is the accent my dad has, and it's the accent all of our dads have, and I love it. That's, that's awesome, man. That's, that's beautiful. I just, uh, I don't know what to say. One, one, one thing that you always say in your videos, and you say, Okay, so that's such... It's such a good question. Everyone asks me about what I think. Uh, they always ask about my history and my past, but not about what I really think. And what I really think um, when it comes to Persian people, when it comes to the Iranian people, is that Iranian people, even though with all our flaws, right, all our flaws, our materialism and uh, our show-offiness and our stubbornness, we are some of the best people on this planet as people. We are kind-hearted, we are warm, we are intelligent, we are strong. And that same stubbornness, the same stubbornness is the same one that has persevered. And to this day, Iran is still Iran. When you look at all the, the countries that have been conquered or invaded, they're very different. If you ask an Egyptian or a Palestinian or a Syrian, or a Iraqi, or a Saudi Arabian, what are they? They tell you Arab. And even though the Arabs invaded Iran, if you ask an Iranian from 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, and yesterday what they are, they will say they are Iranian. Why? Because we have stubbornness, and we have Hafez, and we have Ferdowsi, and we have a culture and a history. And that's what I think. Exactly, baby. 
شاعر همینه We have these people And these people are in all of us In each and every one of us And that is what I think that Iranians need to realize That we have way much more in, in common than we have in different And that we can communicate to one another And make the better tomorrow for all of us Tehranjan, it's been a pleasure, pleasure really talking to you today. We don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you so, so much for being with us today to let us know about yourself, who you are again. I mean, people know you, people have seen you and heard you, but uh, to come on our show and to, to, to display your thoughts um, and, and, and emotions means a lot to, to me and to, and to Ajil. Thank you so, so much for, uh, for being with us today. Okay. I feel like we were so heavy and serious. I want people to know it comes from my unique background. Like I say, it's because I'm half black, half Persian, meaning in America, I'm basically half nigga, half terrorist. You know what I'm saying? Like a car jack, hijack. I'm capable of anything in Homeland Security. You don't, go through, you don't want to go through TSA, let me tell you, at the airport. Trust me. For me, if I want to fly somewhere, I go to the airport a week before just to get there. Because I know what's happening. And because of that, I want to make sure that the world sees the Iran that I see. And I want the world to see the African-American that I see. Did you I don't watch, by the way, did you watch Anthony Bourdain's recent show? On yes, Sunday? I did. What, oh, your, your thoughts about it. What are your thoughts? Amazing. Amazing. There were parts of it, I have to be honest, I got teary-eyed because... So I can only imagine what my dad or my family goes through when they look at stuff like this. And most of my dad's family is in Iran. They are still in Iran. So to me, it was like an emotional mix. And it was beautiful. And it was great to see someone see a glimpse of the Iran that I see when I look at it. I, I really hope that, uh, you know, first of all, you get to go one of these days uh, in your older days. Um, no, you know, I'm going to go. I want to go. Not, a, not, that you have the, not that you have the time, not that you have the privilege, not that you have, you know, the, the, yeah, the, of course. the means. And um, all you need is just the time off, the vacation, two weeks, well, that, three it's weeks. It's not just weeks. the time. That's why, like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Because when you come, when you come, you say, why are you two weeks only? Why are you two weeks only? Why are you two weeks only? That's what I'm saying. Believe my journey, and then you got to take Sorati. That cost another twenty thousand dollars, dude. You, you're, it's easier just not to go. Just, just invite them to a nice dinner or or, or lunch over there. I'm, I'm sure they would love to see you. I, w I wish it was that easy. I wish life was that easy. Tehranjan, I hope I get to see you in person in one of your shows. Hopefully, we'll get to see it in person. And uh, I mean, please keep in touch with the show. Keep in touch with Ajil. Uh, I our, love your show. I love Ajil and the things that you do. Our, go I'm our goal at Ajil is, is for the, the Iranian community or Iranian Persian community that lives outside of, of the motherland. People like yourself, people like myself who grew up in other countries but who still have that pride and joy and, and, and that, that, that belief that what you talked about, that we are Iranian and we will speak our language and we will keep our values and we will, you know, represent our parents and grandparents, but also be very proud Americans or Canadians or Australians. That's what Arjil is all about. It's for people like you and I to grow. It's for the second and third and fourth generation to represent and to keep strong. Well, that's why, I'm, that's why I support you and I support everything you do, man. Please, always keep in touch. Keep me in mind. I'm down for whatever you need me for. Thank you, Tehranjan. I hope I speak to you soon. And uh, thanks again for being on the show. But I have a dream. Bye, guys. Ten. You're on ten. You're on it. I have a dream that my light skin will be just another shade amongst men and women who do come in all shapes, colors, and sizes after all. Throw it in a blender, smoothie, I'm mixed. And when you tell me to choose one race or another, you deny my father or mother, both of whom I love very dearly. And clearly, I'm no more one than the other. I have my father's eyes, my mother's nose, her lips and his toes that fit in my shoes that you have never walked a mile in. And I don't want to choose because then I will lose a whole half of who I am and who they are and who I am. And who I am is I am proud, I am strong, I am beautiful, I am me. Let me be a beautiful being that I continue to be. 
and I will keep being and doing and pursuing my goals and dreams and aspirations. Not be judged by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. I dream to be blind. Now, no one wishes to be blind, but the same blind man no one wishes to be, the one who cannot see, sees not the color of one's skin, but the color of one's heart, one's love, one's action, one's life, one love. Let's get together and feel all right, all right? Don't talk about it, be about it. Be blind, I promise we can see without it. Don't tell me how to talk to be black, what music to listen to to be white, what I should like to be brown, or who I'm supposed to vote for to be right. I can make up my own mind, my own decisions. I know who I am, I know who I am. I don't know who you are, but I'm very pleased to meet you. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day the race is over and I don't need to beat you to the end. I will meet you at the beginning of a new day of all of us winning, a community. Community is a celebration, a combination of communication and unity. So let's communicate and unify till the day that we die so that we live forever in legacy and not in ruin. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it will be easy. We can pretend it's not there or that it never happened, but slavery didn't end. It just spread to our minds. You can't clean the room by sweeping it all under the rug. Ask my mom, I've tried way too many times. Smile in the face, clutch, slide your purse to your back, lock your doors, we're in for a ride. Stereotypes are the new races, and there are way too many isms and not enough types. We can be many and still be one. The sun shines on all of us, but like race, burns our eyes if we look too close. Let's just feel its warmth together. Smile and have a wonderful day. I have a dream.